Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Recently I was required to install a screen door on the front door of a residence. So I cruised down to Lowe's to see their selection of screen doors and as usual my cheap side got the better of me. Sometimes I think that's my only side. But anyway, I loaded up the cheapest door they had. It was the $20 special wood frame screen door. You can see an example of it right here. And I installed it onto the house, and I think I did a really good job. I used hinges, I used the latch, I even used the little spring that slams it closed. You know that sound. Everybody knows that sound of a screen door slamming. Slap! It looked really good. But would you believe it, even though the install was A-OK -okay, perfect, within a month, the door had started to sag, and it wouldn't even close all the way. It had started to sag on the side opposite the hinges, so when it closed, it would actually hit the bottom of the threshold, and it wasn't square anymore. It was just kind of hanging there, and it was uh, not professional at all. So the question arose of what to do about this saggy screen door situation. Lucky for me, I was still within the return window at Lowe's, so I unscrewed the door, took it back to Lowe's, and did I buy a better screen door this time? Of course not. What you see is actually the replacement door that I'm going to be reinstalling in the opening. But this time, I'm going to do it a little bit different, and that's why I'm making this video as well, because the reason this screen door failed was not installer error, or it wasn't a isolated manufacturer defect, it's just the way this screen door is designed. It's basically a bunch of toothpicks glued together, and it doesn't have a lot of sheer stability. For example, if I'm holding it on this end, like the hinges, there's not much structural sheer rigidity to hold it all in a rectangle. This side, sooner or later, probably sooner, is going to start sagging. In fact, I could probably make it sag a little bit now just by pressing right here. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to modify either your new or existing screen door to either remedy or prevent the sagging that has made my screen door affairs difficult as of late. So let's get started. The players in this production are of course the screen door and we're going to shake it up a bit and utilize this piece of scrap one quarter inch plywood. If you don't have one quarter inch plywood, pretty much any thickness will suffice, but probably needs to be thicker than one eighth inch and you probably don't want anything bigger than five eighths inch just for aesthetic reasons. We've also got the Dewalt screw gun, a circular tub, wood glue, drywall screws, nails would work as well, and a saw. Or for you folks over there in the 13 original colonies area, Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. I really don't know if I like that band Rush or not. Prog Rock, I, I don't know. Prog like Europe? No. Progressive. But I don't know, I, I just don't know if I like that band. So I digress. What we need to do is firm up this door and I'm going to show you how. So here's the theory behind this modification. If I have a screen door without any additional reinforcements, I can fairly easily move it like this. However, if I add reinforcements at each corner of the door, it makes it much stronger. We're going to cut four pieces of plywood and attach each of those four pieces on the four corners of this door. And what that will do is really firm up the overall structure of this door and really tie it together and make it stiffer so hopefully I won't have to replace it in a month. 
So the first thing you need to do after you complement my shoes is take your piece of plywood and lay the circular tub on it. You don't need a circular tub, you just need something that's in the shape of a circle to make your structural support pieces. The size really doesn't matter. Oh, and you also need a tape measure and a pencil for this project. This tub is about 15 inches in diameter. I think this will be a fine size. If you use a bigger diameter circle, it will make the door more rigid and more structurally sound at the detriment of aesthetics. So take your tub, and I'm going to place it in a portion of this plywood that isn't rotten and ruined, say right here. Just go ahead and trace an outline. Jigsaw, you're going to need a jigsaw. I haven't done this project before. And then after we cut this circle out, we're going to cut this in four pieces, four quarters, just like that, of course. So there's our circle, and the next thing we need to do is make a couple of lines to split it up into quarters. And take your straight edge. I told you that you'd need a straight edge for this project, right? And I'm going to go the extra mile and sand these. This isn't entirely necessary. That's why I didn't mention that you'd need sandpaper for this job. My plywood pieces are now prepared. It's time to mount them on the door. So there's the door on the ground. Now before we get ahead of ourselves and start attaching the reinforcements, it's important to make sure the door is a true rectangle and is square with itself. To do this, we'll use the tape measure and we'll measure from one corner diagonally to the other corner and we'll do this both directions and we need to make sure that both of those measurements are the same. So if we start here and we take this measurement, it says 87 and 5 eighths. And if we go over here and do the same thing, it tells me 87 and a half, which is close enough, but just as an example to show you how to make the door straight, if you're short this way, what we need to do is make this angle right here longer. We need to go ahead and spread that out so the distance between here and here is greater. So, to do that, I'll go like this. And remember I said we want the angle from here to here greater. So we'll grab it here and just kind of pull down on it a little bit like that. We'll see if it made a difference. You know, again, I really wouldn't worry about an eighth of an inch. You know, what's an eighth of an inch among friends, but, but just as a demonstration. So yeah, now we're sitting pretty at 87 and it looks like 9 sixteenths. And for every sixteenth I gain here, I should lose in the other direction. So this should be a little bit shorter now. Which of course it is. 87 and 9 sixteenths. Pardon me there. So now we have a nice true rectangle to work with. We can start putting on our braces. I had braces 
as a youngster. I didn't like it. I had to have a rubber band in my mouth. And guess what? My teeth are crooked again. So let's zero in on a certain corner and show you how I'm going to go ahead and attach this. The disadvantage of doing this is if this door does happen to break or sag in the future, I can't very well return it to the store with all my modifications. So we're going to put the piece right there. That gives it a nice little gingerbread, a nice little detail as well as adding the rigidity. But before we put it on there, let's kind of get an idea of where it sits. And we'll go ahead and put some wood glue. We don't want to only rely on the screws for holding this all together. These are about one inch screws. You can use a screw, you can use a nail, you can kind of use your own discretion on this. Between the screw and that wood glue, this will be a really secure installation. We'll go right here. We don't want to go too close to the edge of this board for fear of splitting it. So there's numero uno. I'll do these other three on my own time and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, all four corner gussets are now installed. The last thing I'm going to do is put on a coat of paint to add some curb appeal and to really complement the house that this door is going to be installed in. And here's how the door looks after a couple of nice coats of paint. It's now better looking and much stronger than it was originally. It's ready to be installed and hopefully give years of trouble-free service.